Hi everyone, um, welcome again to this series of courses on laws of motion. In this video I will be sharing with you some important formulae that you have to learn and the, all of these will be useful for your um, pre-medical examination. Okay, So the first system that we are going to see is the pulley mass system. Uh, you see this is the system here and some assumptions have to be made the first assumption is that the pulley is massless okay and smooth so there is no friction between the movement in the pulley and the string so it is smooth and it is massless so it is mass considered massless because we are uh, considering an idle simple harmonic uh, i mean an ideal movement we are not considering the mass of the pulley in this equation of motions okay and the second assumption is that the mass of that the second mass is m2 is greater than m1 since m2 is greater than m1 so the pulley naturally will move in this direction that is in the clockwise direction that is why we have taken the acceleration to be downward you can also assume the acceleration to be upwards but that's uh, you can, that's according that depends upon you so this whole system is also called the atwood machine remember that now we have to see the free body diagram of each of these bodies that is the um, uh, the uh, diagram free body diagram is a diagram which depicts the forces acting on a body okay now see we have this body m1 the free the fo uh, the forces acting upon it are the upward tension the downward mass due to ex uh, gravity okay that's the weight and the upward force due to acceleration see in the previous diagram if m1 is moving upwards like this the tension acts on it um, upward force acts on it such as due to a and a downward acceleration due to gravity acts on it okay so to maintain equilibrium that is the equation of motion is given by t minus m1g equals to m1a because t is upward m1a is upward both are in the upward direction both of these balance the downward force m1g okay this is the first equation now see the second body the second body is moving the second body is moving downwards so we have um, <clears throat> the upward tension the downward weight and the downward movement of the body so m to g minus t is equal to m to a okay <clears throat> The downward weight and the downward motion balances the tension here. It's the opposite. So you have two equations here. If you add these two equations, we get m to g minus m1 g is equal to m1 plus m to a. And the tension cancels off because it is positive and negative on each of these equations. So we get from this equation the acceleration of the pulley mass system is given by this formula. Okay. Remember this. This is very important for your sums. Similarly, from 1 or 2, if we plug in the value, substitute the value of A in either of these two equations, we get the value of T, that is a tension, is also a force, which is given by this formula, okay? Now, um, suppose you consider this same Atwood machine system, but the, at, but the system is not constant, it's not at rest, it's moving with an upward acceleration, that is given by A here, okay? This whole pulley is moving upward with an acceleration A. Now you see the free body diagram changes a little. You have this M1 moving upward. We have also we have considered the movement, the total movement of the pulley to be in downward as a previous sum. We have the upward acceleration due to the movement of the pulley, the upward acceleration of the pulley moving as a whole, the right. downward weight and the upward tension. So the equation of motion for M1 is T minus M1g. T is balanced by M1g is equal to the upward motion of the pulley that is m1 a t it is the movement of the pulley as a whole uh, sorry movement of the pulley downwards and a is the acceleration of the pulley so m1 a okay the for these are the forces acting upon this body now we have the same um sorry mm, Now we have this M2 <coughs> free body diagram. Upon this, an upward down, uh, tension force acts, a downward weight acts, a downward AT acts, okay, sorry, a downward AT acts, and a downward uh, acceleration acts, because the, uh, and an upward acceleration acts, because the pulley moves as a whole upward. 
so we have the equation of motion for the second body is m to g minus t is m to a t minus m to a minus m to a because the pull is moving upward okay uh, the downward acceleration is taken to be positive here so the upward acceleration is negative so if we add these two equations one and two we get this formula um, if you work it out simplify it we get the acceleration of the pulley the body is moving r is this it's sli it's a slight change from the previous equation we didn't have this part this term okay so if we plug in a equals to zero here we get the previous formula the previous system similarly you can also find the tension by substitution now we are moving on to a new our next segment that is the Lamis theorem it's a very important formula for concurrent acting forces co-planar -co forces acting upon a body now it's also called the law of signs uh, this states that for three concurrent forces in equilibrium okay now concurrent forces in equilibrium concurrent forces mean they act on the same time and they are in equilibrium that is they balance out each other so suppose this is a body okay this is a body and uh, there are three concurrent forces acting upon it that is f3 f1 f2 these are all vector quantities and f3 f1 f2 are uh, make angles within each other that is alpha beta and gamma so this formula the theorem the Lamis theorem states that if three coplanar that is they act in the same plane okay this is the same plane if three coplanar forces are acting on a particle and it is in the equilibrium state then we have f by sine alpha f2 by sine beta f1 by sine alpha f2 by sine beta is equal to f3 by sine gamma and we see these these ab absolute brackets here give the magnitude of the vector so the value of f1 divided by sine alpha equals to the value of f2 divided by sine beta is equal to the value of f3 divided by sine gamma okay remember this formula now let us consider another system we have three blocks m1 m2 and m3 here these are being pushed forward with an acceleration a and a force f as a result so let the contact forces that is the contact the force arising due to contact between two objects let f1 be the contact force between m1 and m2 f2 be the contact force between m2 and m3 okay let us consider this these so accordingly the acceleration of the system is since this body is moving as a whole towards the right the total mass is m1 plus m2 plus m3 and acceleration is given by force by the total mass that is m1 plus m2 plus m3 now let us consider the free body diagram of each of these bodies in consideration let us consider the free body diagram of m3 now m3 is acted upon by three three forces one is the upward normal reaction force n3 the sidewise horizontal to the words the right f2 force that's due to the acceleration and the downward weight so we have f2 the contact force between m3 and m2 is m3a okay the movement towards the right similarly if we consider the free body diagram of both m2 and m3 together the contact force f1 is towards the right uh, n2 is the normal reaction force the perpendicular upwards downwards is the these two weight okay weights so the f1 accordingly is balanced by a that is m2 plus m3 a okay it's moving right to it so from these two formulas f2 and m f1's formula we can get that f2 is equal to m3 a now you see a is given by this formula so we plug in this formula inside and we accordingly get this that um sorry we accordingly get m3 a is this and f1 is accordingly given by this substitution of the value of a here okay now let us consider another system this system is called uh, two blocks connected by a light inextensible string now light string because we are not considering the mass of the string here these are the assumptions for the equations of motions here because these can change the values of the system so we are considering these assumptions that is it is light massless and it is inextensible that is there is no um, stretching or compression forces acting in the string okay so this is the body m1 and m2 connected by a light string and the body is moving in the right direction because of the force f so let us consider the free body diagram the tension is actually mutually um, in acts in a pair okay remember that 
So if we consider the free body diagram of M1, we have to uh, and the normal reaction force acting up acting upwards, the weight acting downwards, and the tension towards the right. Similarly, for the body M2, the upward normal reaction force, the downward weight, this uh, right wise force, and also the left wise tension. Okay, remember that. So the total acceleration of the body is A and the force is towards the right the force of the body acting on the system as a whole is given by this formula m1 plus m2 into a but for m1 the body for m1 tension is m1a okay and for the body m2 tension is t dash that is given by this formula similarly m2a okay just plug in the values of it now remember the concept of free body diagram that you can see from this these are the forces acting upon a system these help you in finding the equation of motion okay uh, let us consider another system that is this inclined plane um, in this system we have two mass connected by a pulley on the top of the triangle the wedge now let us consider the movement of this mass to be in this direction okay the mass move m1 moves upward and m2 moves downward alpha beta are the angles made by the slopes with the ground and this is the smooth surface there is friction of course because we are considering practical cases here now for the free body diagram of only m1 the body is moving in the this direction towards the toward upwards this in um, upward contact force that is the normal reaction force the downward weight and this weight is move, is broken into two components the sine component and the cos component now in equilibrium we have to consider that the tension that is the upward due to the string string of the pulley is balanced by this uh, by the sine component of the weight that is mg sine the, sine alpha and the normal reaction force is balanced by the downward um, you see in this diagram is balanced by the downward cos component of the weight so we have T minus mg sin alpha is equal to m1a because the body is moving in this direction so m1a provides the acceleration the force which is provided by the balance between the tension and the sin component and similarly uh, for the body m2 if you see this diagram it's the same the body is moving downwards this force is provided by the balance between the tension and the sin component of the body similarly this formula depicts that so if we add these two we get the acceleration as follows okay and similarly if we substitute the value of a we get the tension of the body okay just simplify it and you will get the answer let us consider another system uh, movement of a car on a flat road a circular track these are all dynamics of circular motion this is a circular road for example this is a car this is a car and um, this is a car and this is the center of the body the center of the circle and you know the acceleration is given by v squared by r always in a circular motion this is the car the car is moving upwards is a radius so the free body diagram of the car is given by the upward uh, normal force the downward weight and the frictional force so that the car doesn't topple over the tires acting on the circular road gives the friction that is equal to the centripetal force the force towards the center okay uh, in this direction so the centripetal force is given by mv squared by r as you know so this is equal to the friction uh, the upward normal force and this is the weight similarly if we um, see the equations of motions we have the normal force is balanced by the weight and the frictional force is less than or equal to the static frictional force that is mu s n mu s n is given by mu s mg so we can write that mv square by r is less than or equal to mu s by mg or <coughs> similarly by <coughs> by simplification we have the velocity is less than or equal to root over mu s rg now what does this mean this means that the uh, the minimum velocity required by the body for the movement so that it doesn't uh, topple over remember that because it can easily um, I mean this formula less than or equal to root over mu s rg suggests that the velocity should not exceed this value um, so that the car doesn't topple over because this is the only value that balances the friction okay so thank you for bearing with me in this lesson um, 
remember these formulas these are very helpful for your examination and solving sums okay see you next time